It's that time of year again. Ah! Adults start drinking overpriced pumpkin spiced lattes. Kids start thinking about what they can dress up as. And how they can make those adults jump through as many hoops as possible. But why do we do all that? Where did Halloween come from? Well, conveniently for me, it sort of kicked off round here. But as always, it's complicated. Welcome to Scotland Unplugged and the story of Halloween. When I was a boy, we didn't really have trick or treat. We had guising. And we didn't have pumpkin spiced anything or even pumpkins. We had turnips, which were a bit more of a workout. As with a lot of Christian-based festivals, Halloween has some roots with the pagans. In this case, the Celtic people of Scotland and Ireland, who celebrated Samhain, a festival marking the end of summer and the end of the harvest season. They believed the change in the season was a time where the veil between us and the afterworld was stretched to its thinnest, and that the dead could rise and walk the earth. They built bonfires to ward off evil spirits and used the embers from those fires to light their own hearths. They disguised themselves while they did that so the spirits wouldn't recognise them. Tucked away behind this quiet church is something a bit special. This is Danino Den in the East Nuke of Fife. It has some of the craziest rock formations I've ever seen. It's thought to have been a site of pagan worship in the days before Christianity, and it's said to be haunted by fairies. The first thing you see is an interesting rock. It has a well, a carved footprint, and steps leading down into the den itself. It's thought the footprint could mean it was a place for kings to visit, or that it might have been an altar used by ancient druids. We can only really guess what for. I mean, if you're looking for somewhere to hold a decent Samhain bash, it doesn't get much better than this. It was a celebration and a time for people to come together, dress up, play games, eat, drink and dance. It gets pretty dark here from the end of October and there are less than seven hours of daylight by the time we hit the winter solstice. The prospect of winter would have been a bit grim before central heating, electric light and Netflix. They'd have done pretty much anything they could to appease the gods. And it's thought that may have included blood sacrifice. You'll understand if I don't hang around for too long. Samhain fell on the 1st of November, but their day began at nightfall. So what we would think of now is the eve of the 1st of November. When the Romans invaded from 43 AD onwards, they might have had some influence as well. Duking or bobbing for apples, for example, could be related to their goddess of fruit, Pomona. Then, in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III decided he'd get in on the act and made the 1st of November All Saints' Day. That made the evening before All Hallows' Eve. And round here, that meant incorporating some of the traditions of Samhain. A bit like the way Christmas did with Yule. It's a sensible move if you want to change things. Why do away with everything when you can just add your own tweaks to what's already there? People still dressed up. They carved jack-o'-lanterns to ward off spirits. They played humiliating games, usually involving food. Then, in Scotland at least, along came the Reformation. Religious holidays were suddenly seen as frivolous, along with joy of any kind. It would be a while before Halloween crossed the pond, though. The puritanical pilgrims didn't approve, but there were harvest festivals, and when a lot of Irish people emigrated to the US in the 19th century, after the potato famine, they took their Halloween traditions with them, and the traditions kind of melded together. And that's when things really went into overdrive. The same century gave us horror novels like Frankenstein, Dracula, and the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hollywood turned them into films, giving us the iconic imagery we have today. But things did get a bit out of hand. 
In the early part of the 20th century, vandalism was rife, with groups of American teenagers roaming towns looking for things to destroy, and there were efforts to sanitise things, make Halloween more civil, a community thing with parades in towns. But by the latter half of the century, trick or treat had become a thing, almost as a kind of bribery. It's thought it could also have roots in the English tradition of souling, where the poor could openly ask for food, sometimes soul cakes, in exchange for praying for the dead of the family. These days, in the US alone, Halloween's worth $12 billion a year. And here in Scotland, things have sort of come full circle, with evolved traditions coming back across the Atlantic, creating a kind of mishmash where we still try to get our kids to do the things we did when we were young, but every year costumes and decorations become more and more elaborate. I love it. Happy Halloween.